it is time to switch things up a little bit and check out a new type of the attack called brute force attack. Unlike the previous attacks, which were vulnerabilities, information disclosures or misconfigurations, right now we are going to perform something that will be more of a presentation of the attack than the attack itself, since we are going to cheat a little bit. But before I tell you how we are going to cheat, let's first explain what are brute force attacks. Well, brute force attacks is you sending a lot of different information to the target in order to figure out what information is correct. Now, you could be wondering, what do I mean by sending information to the target? Well, this can be anything. In 99% of cases, it is usually usernames or passwords, so we send a lot of usernames and a lot of passwords and hope that we by accident hit the correct one. And when is this useful? Well, you usually perform this attack to see whether the target has default credentials or weak passwords. These type of attacks will work, for example, if the target has a password that has a small amount of characters or if it is very easy to guess. For example, password, password123 is very easy to guess, but it is also one of the most used passwords in the world. In this case, we know that the MSF admin and MSF admin is one account on the target machine. So we will use those credentials to log in to the SSH. In that sense, this will not be a real attack since we will be putting those credentials in two different lists. One list will contain usernames and other list will contain passwords. Then we will run the brute force attack and you will see it will automatically go through all of the usernames and passwords in those lists and it will manage to find the correct ones which are MSF admin and MSF admin. Let's do it. To perform this using Metasploit Framework, we're going to use an auxiliary module that is used for SSH login. If we search SSH, right here, we'll get a bunch of the results, but the one that we're interested in is all the way up, I believe, and it is this one, auxiliary scanner SSH slash SSH login. Let's copy the auxiliary module name. And let's type down here use and paste the module name. If we type show options for this module, we can see we have a lot of options available to specify. Keep in mind that only some of them are required and a lot of them aren't, as we can see by this column right here. Let's see what are the things that we need in order for this brute force attack to work. We got the brute force speed, and this is how fast it will try the passwords. We can specify a single password or a password file, and we will be going with the password file in our case. We must specify the R hosts, which is the IP address of the target. The R port is the SSH port on the target machine. And let's just double check, it is 22 here, and it is also 22 in our scan. So that is already set correctly. Here we can also set the username, and this username field is a single username, or we can set the user file, which will be the file containing a bunch of usernames. Another possible option that we can do is set user pass file. And what this user pass file is, is a file containing both usernames and passwords. As it says right here, file containing users and passwords, separated by space, one pair per line. Now for this particular attack, we're going to be using a password file and a user file separately. So what we must do first is we must create those files. Let us open another terminal, navigate to the desktop of our Mr. Hacker account, and let's nano usernames.txt. This will be our list containing usernames. And let's just for the purposes of this tutorial, write a few of them, so admin root test123, let's go with the system and msf admin. We must add the correct one in order for the SSH brute force to be able to find it. And after it, let's add one more, let's call this one admin123. So this is six usernames. Of course, in a real life attack, 
you would be using much bigger lists. But for now, for the purposes of this tutorial, we will create these small lists and see whether it will work. So we got our usernames file right here, and it has the correct username specified. Let's save it. Now we need to do the same thing with the password. So let's nano passwords.txt. Here let's type password, password123, hello world. Let's also type MSF admin, which is the correct password, and we know it at the moment. And at the end, let's type test1234. So here we have five passwords, and one of them is the correct one. Let's save this file. And if I type ls, we should have both of the files in our desktop directory. Let's specify them right here in our options. So the password file must be the entire path to this passwords.txt. So we must specify the entire path. To check out the entire path, I can type print working directory inside of the desktop directory and copy this. And inside of our Metasploit framework, we can type set pass underscore file and then paste the path, add slash, and then passwords.txt. This now set the path to the pass file to be this path right here. And we must do the same thing for the usernames. Let's type set user underscore file, paste the same path right here, and add, instead of passwords.txt, let's add usernames.txt. Press enter, and if I type show options once again, let's see what else do we need to specify. Here the password file and the user file has already been specified, but we must also specify the R hosts for this to work. So let's do it. If I type set R hosts, type the IP address of my Metasploitable, clear the screen, and I check out options once again. All seems to be set. We will leave the brute force speed to be 5, which is the fastest. And one more thing that we want to change is this verbose right here. This is currently set to false. We want to set it to true. And this verbose means that it will print out even the failed usernames and passwords. It will not only print the successful login. Let me show you right here. If I set verbose to be equal to true, clear the screen and run this, here it is. It started our attack it is going to try every single combination of usernames and passwords from those two files. Now, you might notice this isn't going that fast, and it will print out all of these failed passwords until it reaches the combination of MSF admin and MSF admin, as both username and password. Let's wait for that combination to come. And here it is. We found the correct SSH username and password. Once it prints out this success rate here, this means it found the correct username and password. And you can just control C this if it didn't stop in order to stop the brute forcing. Now, I know what you're thinking once again. This is not a true attack since we added username and password to the list. But once again, remember that you would do this for the weak credentials and default passwords. And of course, in real attacks, you would be using much bigger lists than these that we created right here. And many of those bigger lists we can find inside of our Cal Linux machine. However, more about them later. For now, we just tested it out to make sure that this brute force attack works. We can also see right here, it opened the command shell as soon as it found the correct username and password. But if you press Ctrl C or you waited for this to finish, it doesn't seem that we can execute commands anywhere. We just went back to our auxiliary module right here. We are not inside of a shell. Well, once something like this happens, Metasploit saves the shell in the background so we can still enter that shell. To check out all of the available shells that we currently have established, we can type the command sessions. And here we can see we got one shell over SSH to the IP address of the Metasploitable. To enter inside of this session, we can type the command sessions-i and then the session ID. In my case, it is 1. 
and it will probably be in your case as well. So if I set here sessions i1, this will start interaction with this shell and it will open our shell right here. And you can now execute the commands as usual. Who am I? Will tell me that I'm MSF admin. If I want to become the root account, I type sudo su, type in MSF admin password, and I type who am I once again. Now I'm root account. Another way that you can establish SSH connection, once knowing the username and password, is like this. First, let's exit out of this, exit out of Metasploit framework, and now that we know the username and password of the SSH, we can open our terminal and type SSH MSF admin, which is the username, at, and then the IP address of the Metasploitable, which is 192.168.1.9 in my case. If I press here enter, it will ask me this question, are you sure you want to continue connecting? I want to specify yes right here. And it will ask me for the password for this specific account. And we know that the password is MSF admin, so I will type it right here. And here it is. We opened the terminal of the Metasploitable. If I type who am I, we are MSF admin. And that would be about it for the SSH brute force attack. Don't worry, real brute force attacks we will perform later regarding website login forms and Wi-Fi cracking. This video was just to introduce you to the concept of brute forcing. If you were to exploit a target like this in real life, it would be considered weak credentials or default credentials vulnerability. And you would of course write it down as a critical vulnerability. Great. That is another vulnerability covered. Let's go and hunt the next one down in the next video.